Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This EXO coming at you here with the recently revived Frankenstein. Sitting on just about a thousand watts of power, I figured I'd take you guys through a little step by step guide of how I went about tuning my amplifiers and how you can do it too. I'm going to start all the way from the head unit, work our way through the sound processors, and eventually make our way to the amps, correcting the signal along the way. Holy smokes! Man, it is 25 through here correcting the signal along the way, like I said. So without any further ado, let's get into this video. First things first, you're gonna need to have yourself a nice clean set of test tones. You can download these right off the internet, but it all depends on what type of music you listen to. You see, the unique part about music is that unlike tones, each song is dynamically different and recorded at different levels than one another. That's why certain songs seem louder, and it's the same concept that advertisers use to gain your attention by gaining the volumes of commercials. Even though you didn't turn it up, for some reason, commercials always seem louder. Why is that? Recording levels. So, what set of tones are good for you to use with your amps? Well, let's go through it. Let's say you mainly listen to unmodified music, music that's on the radio, mainstream artists, CDs, and Pandora radio. In these cases, you can safely use up to a negative 15 dB to negative 10 dB tone. That way you can get the full potential out of your songs. Because most mastered songs nowadays have bass lines anywhere between negative 16 and negative 12 dB. On the other side of things, for all those who play bass boosted and modified music, of course you would not want to use the same tones to tune your system, because instead of amplifying a negative 12 dB tone, you could be amplifying anywhere between a negative 8 and negative 5 dB tone, thus causing clipping and possible damage to your gear. So in these cases, with people who listen to a lot of modified music, it's smart to tune anywhere between a negative 8 and negative 5 dB tone, just to be safe. And on the extreme end of things, you can actually use a 0 dB tone to make sure you never have any clipping or distortion, that way you can always listen to anything you want without ever having to change settings yourself. All right, now that we know which set of tones we're gonna use, we can go ahead and grab our O-scope here and our digital multimeter combo and test the maximum output we're getting from our head unit. We're gonna try to get as close to five volts as we can without clipping, but these head units are notorious for being able to turn them up all the way without any square wave. So we'll be able to look at the actual wave right here displayed on this screen. All right, before we do this, let me just show you my settings very quickly. I have everything set to flat, nothing is gained. Loudness is off, subwoofer output is on, so we can test the RCAs coming out right here. So let's go ahead and turn this on to AC volts right there. Restart the track, turn up the volume. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go up all the way to start, and then if we need to back it off, we can back it off. So as you can see, our wavelength is looking pretty good. We're matching up right there at 40 hertz at 2.74 volts. Uh, it's not very high. I thought this head unit would be a little bit higher than that, seeming as though it is a nice pioneer. But now we know we can play a negative 5 dB tone on this head unit at full volume with zero clipping. Now let's get down to the next component, which is going to be the Behringer sound processor. But for you, it might be a Clarion processor, it might be a Rockford, but let's get down into these outputs now. Okay, we got the RCAs all plugged into the processor. We know we had 2.7 volts coming in, so let's go ahead and turn it on and see what we have coming out of it right now. Here we go, we got 2.7 volts right there, 40 hertz, and the signal is still looking good. Let's go ahead and increase this and see if we can get more voltage with still a clean signal. Let's go right up to where we want to be, around 5 volts. I believe it should do us good, about 5 volts. Let's try that right there. Look at our signal. Beautiful. Still a nice clean signal, no chopped off wave. We know we have clean signal coming from our head unit to our processor, and now we know our processor is putting out a clean five volts going to the back. So now let's go to the back, guys, and work on the amplifier now. We just tested these RCAs for a nice clean signal at five volts, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug them in since we know it's safe. There we go. And now we're gonna go on to the outputs of the amplifier. I already have one plugged in, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the other guy to the multimeter, excuse me, to the O-scope, so now we can examine the final sound wave to make sure everything's nice and round for us. All right, so we got the stroker all running right now, and she is putting out 33.9 volts at half gain right now. So in the other videos, this is what I was working with for output. So let's go ahead and see if we can turn this up a little bit without clipping. The wavelength looks pretty damn good right now, so let's see if we can increase it safely. I'm just gonna go ahead and start cranking it up a little bit, like a little quarter of a turn. Here we go, we've jumped up quite a bit. Oh, you can see we're clipping a little bit. See that right there, guys? That's clipping. I'll exaggerate it a little bit more for you. 
Look at that. That's a saw wave. Imagine your subwoofer trying to stick up like that instead of moving nice and smoothly like this. This is what you want. So let's let's uh, fine tune it a little bit more. I'm going to crank on my screwdriver just a little bit more. I think we're starting to get it. I think we're starting to get it. Nope. Right there. You can see it starting to develop in the front. So I'll back off just a little bit. Right there. That's where I'm going to leave it. 47 volts. So as you can see, I got my speakers all plugged in and I'm gonna go ahead and put this to peak hold. Let's go ahead and turn on this current meter here so we can get the wattage coming out of the amplifier. So let's go ahead and give it a quick burp on the LC1. We know everything's clean, I'm gonna max it out. One more just to make sure the voltage is good. <laughs> it's getting loud. We got 42.3 volts, so we know that's nice and clean. And oh crap, I forgot to put freaking peak hold on this. Damn it. Here we go one more time. Let's roll it up. All right. Check that. We got 10 amps and still at 42.3 volts. So let's go ahead and do the math real quick. Well, there she is, Utubulus, all tuned up from the head unit processor all the way into the Stroker 1000 in the back. Putting out some nice clean signal for the triple X's, PSI soft parts. Oh yeah, they gotta love flexing on those nice lows now. Even cleaner signal, and I actually got to gain my amplifier just a little bit more, so we're putting out even more power. Oh, they're gonna love it. I'm gonna put out some more videos of these guys moving, so make sure you check it out, guys. This is EXO. Just wanted to make a quick little nice tuning video to clear up some stuff for you guys. All right, I will see you in the next videos. <laughs>